Hello and welcome to another tutorial on Unity in which we're going to be looking at how we can make boxes, lids, chests, doors open. Uh, this will be useful in VR and possibly AR projects and in this part one video we're going to look at how we use the built-in animator. Remember if you find any part of this video useful please remember to like, subscribe, positive comment below and please feel free to leave uh, suggestions for future content. Okay, so you can see I'm in Unity. I've just got a basic scene for now because first of all we're just going to test and look at the, the basics before we actually look at how we can put it into VR. So I'm just going to start by adding a quick cube. Uh, this cube obviously is about one meter square in, in VR land. I'm just going to press F to focus on that, that thing. Um, I'm not happy where this is so I'm just going to reset the coordinates. There it goes, so it's 0, 0, 0. Um, I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. So this is going to act as a very, very simple lid. Now, if I click on the rotation tool, it's rotating from the middle. Now, not many lids rotate from the middle. Not very useful. So what I'm going to do is add an empty. So add an empty. That's in the same sort of place. I'm just going to come to the side view. I'm going to move this empty just about there. Imagine this is where the hinge is going to be. I'm not worried about where it is along there as long as it's on this one edge. So now, if I drag my cube onto the game object, onto the empty, I'm just going to call this sort of lid uh, hinge. It doesn't really matter what I call it at the moment. Oh no, it's more, more about my case. It's irrelevant. So now when I sort of rotate, it will rotate the lid up and down. So we can see, you know, I can also just use the coordinates over here. So 90 degrees, oops, that's 9 degrees. 90 degrees, or oh, back to zero. Okay, so we've got a pivot point now. So I'm making sure I've still clicked on the lid hinge. I'm going to go on to Window, Animation, um, Animator, um, and Window... Animation, animation, there we go. So I want both of these windows. So I'm going to drag this one just down here. Again, doesn't matter where you put it. Um, it's just, that's how I'm feeling like working right now. So I'm clicking, making sure I'm on lid, lid hinge still. I'm going to press create. Um, I'm just going to come up out of there. Let's create a new folder for this. So let's just, let's just assume this is going to be a chest by the time I've finished. Uh, chest, lid. Um, yep, we went to that folder, open. And let's just call this lid, oops, lid open. Hope that's okay. Yep, there we go. I'm going to click on keyframes. Um, I was hoping it would be a record keyframe as is, like it would be in Blender, but it's not. So what I'm going to do is just move this to 90 degrees, then back to zero. So now we can see it's put a keyframe just down here. I'm going to scroll right over to about one second, um, and I'm going to move this to 90 degrees. So that's an eight and a half. I can now move this slide and we can see it's moving smoothly between those two key frames. Okay, so our next one is we want to create a lid closed. So if I'll create a new clip. Uh, this is going to be called lid uh, close. Uh, and I can do the same thing again, pressing the key frame button. Uh, this time I'm going to put it up to 90 degrees and leave it there. Scroll over to one second approximately and come down to zero degrees. So again, now we've got it moving um, back into the close position. Okay, so next step. So our next step is click on animator. We can now see we have got two two stages of the lid open and lid close. I'm just going to tie this up a little bit. I don't really need to. But I'm going to. I'm going to create a empty state. I'm going to call this default. I'm going to right click and just say um, set as default state. So this basically means when, when your game starts playing, nothing's going to happen. Uh, there'll be no animation playing. Okay, so we're up to now. So the next thing, I'm just going to double click lid open. I'm just going to say loop time. I don't want this animation to loop. Same for lid close. I make sure that's unclicked so it doesn't keep looping the animation itself. That's fine. If you do want to just test things, you can just use this like a video DVD controller by pressing play. There we go, we can see it's now looping, which is why I unticked the loop bit. Okay, so our next bit is we want to sort of put some code to this. Now, just for testing purposes, I'm just going to write some default code rather than having it on a trigger so on a key state. So I'm going to create a new script. So a project, I'm going to go inside my chest lid, create a new script, um, create script. I'm just going to call this uh, chest chest and in for now, doesn't really matter what I call it. Okay, so you're in Visual Studio. So the first thing I'm going to do is create an animation. This is going to allow us to talk, uh, it's going to allow us to talk to the, I can't remember to spell animation. There we go. Animation, I'm just going to call this chest, uh, chest lid. Um, that'll do. 
Uh, this is basically going to allow us to link back to our thing itself. So you can see on our lid hinge, we've got the animation block ready to go. Uh, but I want to talk to the animation part of the animator. So let's have a go into this. So I've got chest lid. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is now is is connect to that. So if I just say chest lid equals get component, and this is going to be our animator. If I spelled this wrong, have I done the wrong thing? No, I've done the wrong wrong bit. It's fine. We can fix that in a moment. Let's get rid of that. It should have been an animator. Again, common mistakes. I like to include these on purpose. Honest. There we go. So now that is going to get us our our link to our property, uh, our component. So the chest lid. I'll go link that up. Now inside my update, um, I'm going to go if um, input. So again, I wouldn't do this uh, in the actual game. This is just for testing purposes to make sure we are happy with it. So if I say get key down, oh yeah, what's wrong with my spelling today? Get get down. Um, and I'm just going to go key code dot o that's for open um, again so it's just for testing purposes and now I can say chest lid dot play and then we're going to give it the name of the animation so I'm just going to nip back and see what I call it call it lid open good so I just call it in speech marks of course uh, lid open and that should now say when we press o it's going to play the animation and just to do the close obviously I'm going to go uh, C and now we can just say click for close. Okay, so we're going to save that, go back into Unitate, and we'll give it a quick whirl, see if it works. Okay, so here we are back in Unity. I'm going to press play. Uh, now, I'm not actually expecting this to work first time, for reasons I'll explain in just a moment. But if I press O, oops, I forgot again, common mistake. I forgot to hook up the code, so let's just press stop. Let's drag the code on. Again, these are really common mistakes, which is why I include them, honest. So now we're in that window, if press O, there we go, we can see it's nice and rising up, and press C to close. Um, okay, I, the reason I didn't expect it to work is when I did this yesterday, it threw a little, it didn't actually error, it just didn't work the way I expected it to, which was about the speed. What we can do, is if you do want to change the speed, I can just put 0 for the layer we're on, and I can also put in 0.1F, and that's going to be play a tenth of the speed, so we can change how quick things are. Um, oops, let's put a comma just there. So let's go and see what difference this makes. Okay, it's made absolutely no difference, uh, which is unusual, that's fine. So either way, we've now got a, a lid that will open and close. Okay, so the second part I want to do is going to blend very quickly and make a nice looking chest instead. And then from that, we'll hook into the VR. Okay, so here I'm in Blender, uh, we can see our default cube is two meters by two meters by two meters. Uh, I've never seen a chest that large, that would be very difficult to carry, so let's just make this a bit smaller. So I'm just going to make it maybe 80 centimeters wide um, by, again, let's have a quick look at that. Oh, I don't want to do that at all, did I? Say point, I don't know, six centimeters tall, and then our actual height would also be maybe about 80. Are we happy with that as a box? No, I don't think I'm happy with that. Um, this is where I would probably like to go in. Okay, so the important thing in Blender is is now to actually pivot this properly. So right now, just like in Unity, if I wanted to rotate this, it's going to rotate around that middle point, which we don't want to do. So what I'm going to do is go into Edit Mode, I'm going to select all the vertices, and I'm going to move them to that point just there. So we can now see that that should be our pivot point when I rotate. There we go, it's going to come up and down from that bit. So now I can move the whole thing back. I suppose I should give it a quick material. Okay, it's just lid. I'm just going to say selected objects only. Uh, leave everything else as it is. Yep, that'll do. Should be able to go back into Unity. Okay, so I'm back into Unity, but now I've gone back into my VR project. So if you've not watched my lesson one, on Quest 3, please go watch that now, and then we can continue. So I've got a basic scene, I've got the camera, the light, I've got a plane to act as some ground, um, <clears throat> I've got my camera rig on here with my controllers, and I've got the chest that I've just saved. So I'm going to just put this in, I'm going to rotate this round a little bit, um, so I'll look. So again, I've clicked on the, I've clicked on the entire chest. 
So let's just rotate this properly 90 degrees so we can see it. So hopefully when I run this, I've put it to my left because the computer sat right in front of me. Um, I'm going to just lift this up a little bit. So it's sat on the ground height. Okay, that'll do. Um, now, if we look at the chest lid, we can got the chest, the cube, the cylinder. Now, this is also what I should really have done in Blender is I should have named these. I should have named this lid. I should have named this the box part so that when we're in Unity, we can see it a little bit easier. So I've got the lid. I can click on the rotation handle. I can just test this and we can see it's rotating from the right area. But whereas last time it was the X axis, this is now rotating on the Z axis. So I am just going to pay attention to our starting point is 180 degrees. And that's because of the way I rotated it in Blender while I was modeling. It doesn't make any difference, it's just to be aware of it. So if I just put that back to 180. Okay, so again, I will quickly speed through setting it up for animation. Okay, so now I'm in here, I'm going to click on our lid. I'm going to add a um, collider. Box collider will do. So there's our box that's edited. So we can see that's way too big. We don't need that. We're going to just shrink this down a little bit. So that I'm going to be fairly generous with the collision area. So hopefully what we're going to do is change our code so that when the hand interacts with it, it should then... Um, obviously trigger the animation code that we've just written. So we're going to need to also set this to be an is trigger. Uh, do I need to tag this? No, I don't need to tag it because the code's going to be attached to it. So obviously this is a new project, so we'll need to create a new script. So again, we'll call this chest um, controller. Okay, so now we've got the script created. Um, you will see, because I've remade the chest and I renamed it, I have had to change the names within our actual open and close. Uh, so make sure you've got those named properly. So again, to double check, we have got our cylinder, which of course is the lid, so I should have really, really named that. We've got the script attached, which I've just dragged over. We've got our box collider, um, which is the trigger. So again, we can see there's the box collider. I've set that to be a trigger. So now what I need to do is find something solid to physically, you know, press it your hand. So if I just zoom right in on my controller prefab, um, again, this is from a previous lesson, I'm just going to create a 3D object, a sphere. This is just so I can see what's going on. Um, I'm going to scale lock this and put 0 0.5. Let's have a look. Yeah, that should do. And we'll drag this forwards. Now this is going to, going to be act as my collision detection area. I could have just put a box collider on the whole thing, but I always like to see what I'm doing to make sure things are working so my way of debugging. And then of course, I can just turn off the renderer. So once I'm happy, that'll still be there. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is tag this. I've already made a tag called right controller. I will bring that back so we can see it. Now to prove this does in fact work, if I jump into my code, um, again, because the truth with VR developing is if something goes wrong, you don't know where it's going wrong. So I always suggest take it step by step. So if I just now go on trigger, on trigger enter, of course it finishes it off for me, so private void on trigger enter other. I'm going to say if other dot game object dot tag equal equals, not minus, minus, equals um, right controller. So if it's the right controller touching it, I'm just going to sort of say debug.log to make sure that it is in fact working. Um, so this will just be, you know, open chest. Obviously it's not going to open chest, it's not a magic word just yet. So if I just press save on that, jump back into Unity. So again, to test if this is actually working, what I'm going to do is just lift this off for the moment. Um, actually I'm going to add a rigid body before I go any further. Uh, it's kinematic, so I know this is a physics object. Uh, is kinematic just means it won't actually be solid, but it will trigger the hit events. So I'm just going to make sure I'm in the right areas. Yep. Again, this is just this can be a lot quicker than than setting up and compiling to your Quest or other VR. This, of course, will work with other headsets, by the way. So if I've got the sphere, uh, which is my collider, I'm just going to press play. I'm going to keep my eye on the console window. Um, so if I just now move this in, there we go. We can see it's trying to open the chest. Got two hits there. So as I go and touch it. There's the third, fourth, and so on. So we know that's working. I don't have to worry about the headsets just yet. So we've got now the collision in place. Uh, we just need to go back to our code and actually make this work. So um, what we should be doing now is rather than saying chest open, is we want it to play the chest open. 
Um, so hopefully this should now trigger that. So again, I'm just going to save that. So let's just see if that triggers. So now, there we go, it's playing the animation. Now, of course, the difficult bit is, it's just going to keep playing that, which we, we, which we kind of don't want. So what I'm going to do is just put a, a quick statement. Now, there's all sorts of code we could do to fix this, like checking it's playing. I'm just going to do a very quick uh, variable, which is going to say um, bool is open equals false. So that's what I'm just starting it out as. I'm going to come down here. And I'm just going to say if. So we're, we're inside the right controller. Um, if is open equal equals false. I could use an exclamation mark, but I don't like that sort of code. Um, X. This won't be perfect, but it should get you in the right direction. So now I can just grab that and say chest close. So let's uh, go and see how that looks. So hopefully I should now be able to move this round. Oops. Well, that's not having it, is it? Oh, I know what I did wrong. Again, trying to speed through it. Obviously, we now to say is open equal equals true. And of course, is open equals false. So obviously, when it opens up, you can now say is open and vice versa. Let's go and have a look at that. There we go, and it opens. I'm sure there'll be some glitching, like if I try and leave, you know, if I try and move it too quick. But we've now got an opening and closed chest. So again, you can apply that to doors, to windows, all sorts of other things. Same sort of simple methods. You can do it a lot quicker than I've recorded this video. Um, in the second version of this, I'm going to show you how to do pure code rather than using the animator. Um, I sometimes find using the code a bit easier, a bit, a bit more versatile for longer projects. Um, so let's have a look at how this is in actual VR. Okay, so here we are in VR. Unfortunately, my controller batteries are flat. So you can see, basically I've got the, uh, the sphere attached to my wrist. There we go, we can see it is working. Let's see if we can bug it out a little bit. Okay, yeah, we can, but I think I could live with that anyway. Could certainly write some code into check. We've now got a crate that will open. Okay, so again, if you found any part of this video useful, please do remember to like, subscribe, positive comment below, and suggestions for future content. And I shall see you in part two. Want to look at how we can do the same feature, but using just pure code rather than the animator.